give it up for my friend, baby, funny man, Michael Collier! Thank you. All right, thank y'all. I only got five minutes. Don't go messing that up with a lot of laughs and applause. Sit on down. Look, I'm gonna get right to the point. I come today to talk about my mama, okay? And of course, I can't say nothing about my mama until I say something about your mama. So let's just start, let's just start with your mama. Um, your mama is the greatest family member you will ever experience. Oh, daddy's all right, your brother and sister's cool, but your mama is the ticket. Your mama believed in you before you believed in you. And your mama will stand with you through thick and thin. I mean, till the end. You kill somebody. I'm not talking about on accident. I'm talking about on purpose, okay? Cut them up in little pieces. Make a lampshade out of backbone, okay? Your mama will be the one sitting in court with your crazy behind. She holding the Bible. That's my baby. You don't know my baby. My baby, look, mm, not my baby. You don't know nothing about my baby. My mother was my first hero, and she came to the shows when y'all wouldn't come, okay? It wouldn't be six people in the audience, but my mama would be there. She'd sit there and laugh for a while. She'd get up, she'd move over there, she'd sit down, she'd laugh. She'd get up, she'd move over there, she'd sit down, she'd laugh. She'd get up, move over there. Made it feel like a crowd, okay? Um, my mom transcended May 1st. I don't even call it dead, because as long as you hold somebody in your heart, they're still alive and well and right there, okay? She has only transcended her light to me, and I hope to shine it upon you. And let me tell you something, my mom was 79 years young. She had beat breast cancer, she was fighting liver cancer, she was doing dialysis three days a week. Now, I don't know if you know about dialysis, but when you have dialysis, you tend to lose your appetite. So I would fly in every three weeks to Chicago for the last three years and cook for my mama. Now, anybody here like soul food? Y'all like collard green? Does anybody here put turkey seasoning in the collard green? Look out, look out, look out, look out. There's a sausage called a turkey kielbasa sausage. I'm not gonna say the name of the company because I know I can't. Anyway, I take that sausage, I cut it in one inch pieces, put that at the bottom of the pot with a full cup of water, half a cup of olive oil, green pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper, a whole onion, and a half of garlic. Now I use season, I go with that spike because it don't have no salt in it, Monique. Anyway, I let that simmer for about 10 minutes and you put the greens on and let them get <laughs> will change your life. Has anybody here ever had a Krispy Kreme donut? No, wait, I'm not talking about the cold ones. I'm talking about when that sign say fresh hot. And you got to run down there to watch them. Make the donuts and see little balls of dough go up a ladder, they fall in the hot grease, then they just start cooking, just start cooking. Then a hand flip them to the other side, they fall back in the grease, and then they come to some icing. The icing about this thick. And when the donut go through that icing, and you put it in your mouth, they literally melt in your mouth. I swear, first time I had a Krispy Kreme, I swear I almost can't. Food <laughs> will change your life. If you still have your mama alive today, it is an amazing blessing. Call your mama every day and say, I love you. Your mama will never get tired of hearing you say, I love you, man, you know? I am so honored to be here this evening. I love this woman so much, and she's one of my heroes from when I first started doing comedy, and now here I am on the stage with y'all at BET. This has been an honor and a pleasure. God bless y'all real good. Thanks. I come see you. Come on over here, baby. Y'all give it to Michael Collier. We're going to talk to Michael Collier right after this break. Don't try to go nowhere. Big Jim, give it to Sitting here with my brother, actor, comedian, Mr. Michael Collier. Oh, baby. Wow. wow. Now, the comedians in the industry. Yes. We know you as legend. Oh. Okay. Because when so many of us came in, mm -hmm. you had been in the game. And we admired the fact that you were bold enough to go to Venice Beach mm -hmm. and stand outside and do five shows, Saturday and five shows. Sunday, I applaud that. I applauded that back then because I'm like, wow, like he just go out in the open and just start telling jokes. What made you do it and how'd you even get started? Well, it wouldn't let me come inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Now, you know, it's really funny that uh, I, I was an actor first in Chicago and I always wanted to be a comedian. Eddie Murphy inspired me because in 86, he was the man. You know, he had to make the number one movie, number one uh, concert, and he was the top show on television, Saturday Night Live. He was a star and he was young and everybody loved him. They were throwing money at him and he did it all with jokes. So I went and got me some Red Fox albums and I learned me three jokes and I started going around the city and I said, look, put me on stage and just let me do my three jokes in between the dancing. Let your people rest so they can get their strength up, they can dance some more, buy some more drinks. That's why they're here, you right, know? Right. Even if I fail, they get to laugh at me, they still rest it, they buy more drinks. But if you love me, that's it like, no, if you love me, give me 30 dollars. So I do that 10 times a week. I made 300 a week just doing three Red Fox jokes, you know? And then I just and put them together like it's a routine. And then from there, I just started adding. And then you start, as comedians know, you start taking out other people's material and start creating parts of your life. Talk about your story, like my mom, who's my queen. And, and although she's not here, she is all here and all up in here. And, and in everything that I do, I, I, um, I'm kinder to people and my performances are stronger because of my mother and of her, of her presence always here and always with me. You know what I'm saying? So I am very excited about what's going on with my life these days. Now, and, and see, what I want people to understand, so you're very excited what's going on with your life nowadays. Right. Just tell them a little bit about the history so they'll understand about your excitement right now so the appreciation can set in. Well, it, you know, it's really the story of the transformational power of God, you know, because he took me from being a crackhead, telling jokes on Venice Beach, to being one of the top comedian motivational speakers on this planet. Come on, and he allowed, me to, yeah, he allowed me to expand that, you know. No, really, if, if God is not the answer, then you're asking the wrong question. And if God is the leader of your game, if he's running the ship, you can't fail. You know what I'm saying? So I have God and a wife who don't just love me, she likes me too. So, <laughs> so I have all the traits that I need to be successful. It's only me to fail. I'm the only one standing in my way. And most people, they're the only one standing in their way. If they can get out their own way so what's theirs by divine right can come to them, they'll get it all. They'll have it all. You know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes <clears throat> we don't realize why things happen when they're happening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things are said that need to be said right when they need to be said. Mm -hmm. And you just said something. Mm -hmm. And if you could, look at that sister sitting right next to you and say it to her one more time. You got to get out the way. Oh, you got to get your own way. You know, a lot of people don't understand that that's the thing stopping them from getting what they want. Their fear, their lack of faith. Because if we're God dancers, there is no fear. So then you just do your thing. And the people who are really for you will gravitate to you. And the people who aren't will disappear Come as on. long as God stays in the back. Yeah. Come on. So, yeah, my God, God. so we ain't worried about it, no, baby. No, now, God's now. And it's already south. Now see, you know, you know why I asked Michael to do that? Because Michael did that for me years ago. Do you remember at the Improv in California when I was new to Hollywood, baby, mm. and nobody would give me an opportunity to go up on stage. And it was mm. you and your wife. And mm. I'm over in the corner like, they won't give me a chance. And you came over there and you said some oh, beautiful yay. words to me, Michael. So I know the power of words. Well, I'm glad I did, because now I'm need to come to you for a job. <laughs> so <laughs> that's going to work out. That's gonna work out real good in a minute. That's gonna be bad. Now, Star Search. Okay. Yeah. Star Search. Mm -hmm. And then you won Star Search mm -hmm. and donated half to the homeless. Yeah, I'm trying to get some of that back. You know, I know. <laughs> no, 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 the homeless been shopping, girl. They got bags and carts. No, I need the money back. No, I'm just I'm just joking. Someone I said that on stage and someone actually wrote in on my on my blog. Well, if you can't get the money away and you won't complain about it, don't do it. It's a joke, lady. Yes. It's a joke. And when we gave it, and it's how come people have this legend about my life that's not true. I've never been homeless. But I was doing Venice Beach and I would always help people in the street. I'd come to work and I'd bring 10 meals every morning because they only cost 99 cents. Now you ain't getting no meat. But you got you got two eggs, you got toast, you got jelly, you got hash brown potatoes, and if you sleeping on a park bench. That's a meal. So I get 10 of them and I'd hand out 10 every place I go because I know if you ever want to have anything, you got to learn how to give all to all. Yes. The more you give away, yeah, if you, you try to help everybody, you won't have no place to put all your stuff. Ooh, that's that's you. for sure. So I started doing that. And then when I won the 100,000, Ed McMahon sort of shocked me. Before I won it, he asked me, and I wasn't thinking at the time. He just said, what you going to do with the money? And I realized my life is a blessing. You know, I can stand in the street and talk stuff. That's the, the gift God gave me. Anyone on this planet, I can stand still and talk. And people stand around me to hand me some money. Okay, so I can stand out on Venice and do that, and I'm looking at homeless people and crackheads like myself and other addicts, and I have an opportunity to help someone. That's what I want to do. I want to get so much money that I can give it to everybody. You know what I'm saying? 
So when I gave that back to the homeless, people start telling this wonderful story. Michael Collier was homeless. He won 100000 and he gave money to the homeless. I ain't going to never be homeless. Let me tell you something. As long as God is in my life, unless somebody hit me in the head and I lose my senses, I'll never be homeless. I could be totally broke today and butt naked. I guarantee you in three days, I'm going to have a new house with more gators. Come on. And- Come on. <laughs> what? Come on. And may I, may I say what? this? Because I know that Peter and all them people be watching the show. Let me just say this about these gators. No animals were killed for these gators. Each one of these animals were found dead, lying, <laughs> lying alongside the road. No, it was more of a gathering than a killing. It was a gathering, you know. Um, I'm not fooling with you. I won't do it. No wait, way. Wait, let me slip this gift in for you because I was watching one of the shows and um, you had the Universal Circus on. I just went to see it this week. Wasn't it amazing? It's amazing in yes. that it's black. You know what yes. I'm saying? And I love my blackness. I'm just, I don't know if y'all know about me, but I try to hi- raise black people up wherever I am. You've never seen me dressed anything less than splendiferously. You've never heard me speak anything less than eloquent. If a white man meets me and I'm the only, I'm the only black person he met, he don't want to meet everybody else. He might be grabbing this when he's talking because he want to be like us because I want to always raise us up and carry us highly. That's why I love my president because of how he carries himself. Yeah. They've done everything but call him and they almost did that when he went that one, you know, but he still walks it with grace. And let me just say this real quick about that word. They keep saying we got to stop using the word. My take on that is we can't stop using the word till we get rid of them. That's another story. <laughs> Let's get back. I did a, oh, excuse me. I did a benefit show uh, Sunday with uh, George Wallace for the West End Medical uh, Society and to raise money for them. And and they, and when I watched the circus and I watched you today, when I left there, I took this from them. I stole this, actually. Uh, yeah, they had three on the tables and they was looking the other way. So when I got it, I actually <laughs> was going to take it to one of my fabulous granddaughters. I have two great granddaughters. And then I was like, I want to give you a gift. And then I watched the show again this morning and it was the circus. And I said, wait a minute, there's a circus. So let me bring you the Jack in the Box from the circus. And it actually works. Turn, turn that little Thank hand Thank you, baby. Oh, and he jumps out. But actually, I stuffed him in wrong. But if you play him, he makes the whole song pop, go the weasel, and he hops the hell out. And um, <laughs> the princess. And the frog. And the frog, baby. What a wonderful, amazing ride I'm having with this. You know, and it started out as a line, just one sentence, but Disney. You know, I've never done animation. So it's my first animation. It's the first black animated Disney feature film ever. So every black person, every black person should see it. And for two reasons. Number one, you should see it because it's not just uh, historical, it's hysterical. But secondly, you should see it to support ourselves. I know it's a white company that, that made it, but it's a black film. And if we all go to the film, no matter how terrible it is, if we all go, then the white company said, uh-oh, they support themselves. Let's do three more. Then them scared brothers who's sitting up on the mountain who's got tons of money will go, well, maybe we can invest in ourselves since the white man doing three more. Next thing you know, we're producing our own thing. So we got to always, always support us first and get off them bootlegs. I don't get no money from that bootleg. Stop that. Stop it. Okay, and, and so I only had one line. By the time I got through it, it turned into nine lines. Yes. And although I only got nine lines, I'm in the movie. Okay, and... The Wii game is out. I'm in the Wii game. I only got nine lines in the movie. I got eight and nine lines in the Wii game. I don't want to tell y'all I just bought the new house. But that's another story. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Well, see, along with the new house, you got some new movie roles that's also oh coming out. God. Can we talk about Malice in Wonderland oh with Snoop Dogg? Oh, my Dog? God. We just shot this with Snoop Dogg, DJ Quick, Exhibit, Soldier Boy, and... Uh, 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 and the master, Snoop, is his film, you know, and it's, it, it, it rolls with the album he just dropped in December. And I get to play a dirty cop, you know, uh, and my boss is Hawthorne James. I remember Red from the Five Heartbeats, yeah. the Hell Motor. He my me, and I'm a dirty cop, and I'm, I get to shoot at Snoop. I kicked him in the head with my Prada boots. And then, um, and I get to fight Soldier Boy, little bitty Soldier Boy. I kept making him bust up laughing. You know, every time the camera wasn't on me, I said, oh, you know, I'm gonna choke you till you do the funky chicken, right? And I, he be trying to hide his laughter, right? They said, no, we gotta shoot that over now, quit playing. He's like, it's his fault. No, sir, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was so much fun. So it comes out on uh, the 22nd of March, and you'll be able to get it when you buy the album and it's the DVD, but it is really excellent because it's dramatic, and all the artists perform in between the dramatic performances. So it's some real cool stuff. But what I'm really proud of is my documentary. Uh, it's about my president. I started shooting it uh, at the inauguration. I'll be through with it in two more months with the editing. It's called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the White House. I knocked on the door, and a brother answered. So when that when that. Drops. When that drops, it's gonna kill him dead. Yo! <laughs>